Hello, today I'm going to share a tutorial with you on how to make a water bottle carrier. As always, if you enjoy the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. So here on the table, I've got all of the fabric pieces that I need all ready and cut out, but I'll just quickly go through how I measured up those pieces. The first measurement I took was the height of the water bottle. So basically from the base up until the point I wanted the main bit of the carrier to go up to. And the other measurement I took was the circumference at the widest point around the water bottle. So the first piece that I cut out was the outer piece. So you cut one of these in your main fabric. Um, I added fusible fleece to mine just because I had a bit spare from when I made my um, shoulder bag. In order to work out the width of the outer piece, I calculated the circumference and then added two lots of seam allowance. So on mine, I believe I used a one centimetre seam allowance. So I just added two centimetres to the measurement for the circumference. So for the height, I did the height in centimetres plus two centimetres for my two lots of seam allowance. And then I added two lots of 1.2 centimetres because that's how big I wanted the casing to be. The next piece I measured out was the lining. So I cut one of these in the lining fabric. I didn't put any fusible fleece on this piece. So for the width, I did the circumference measurement again, plus the seam allowance. And for the length of it, I did the height measurement plus two lots of the seam allowance. The next pieces I cut out were the bases for both the outer piece and the lining. So for this, I took the circumference measurement, divided it by pi, which is 3.14. Then with the answer to that, I divided it by two to get the radius of my circle. Um, and then I added one lot of seam allowance um, just because I was using a compass to draw this out. So that just gave me an idea on how to measure it out using the radius. Next, I cut out the strap bases. So for this, you need to cut out two in the main fabric and two in the lining fabric and interface all of the pieces just to give it a bit more strength so you need to cut it to the desired width so for this you need to cut it to the width of your d-rings and also the desired length you want it to be once folded over and be sure to add the seam allowance on both the width and the height the final pieces that i cut were for the strap so i cut one in the main fabric and one in the lining fabric again i used interfacing just to strengthen both bits of fabric also, it's good to mention that you will also need two D-rings, um, which will obviously affect the width of the straps and the strap bases. Two swivel clasps, which are corresponding width. A slider, again, will need to be a similar measurement to the D-rings and swivel clasps. And you'll also need a short length of elastic to put around the top of your bottle. I don't actually think this step is necessary, so you could leave out the elastic bit and to be honest it would be a lot easier because that was the hardest part. So to begin with you need to stitch the side seam of the outer piece and the side seam of the lining piece. The lining is a bit longer just because it folds down um, and has the elastic casing section. So there I am just, um, I'm using quilting pegs just because it's a little bit quicker. And then I've taken it off to the sewing machine to sew those seams down. So as I mentioned, I've used a small seam of one centimetre, but you could do it um, wider or shorter than that, depending how you like. And then I've just trimmed it with the pinking shears, just because you don't want too much bulk on this. Now, because I've used quite a different lining fabric, I have had to then change over to a different thread and bobbin. So I'll be doing a lot of chopping and changing during this. So after that, I then pressed the seams out so that they'd lie flat. Right, so next I folded down the top edge of the lining piece. So I have folded it down so that I've got the um, elastic casing section folded down and the seam allowance. So you can see I'm using my seam gauge here, which I mentioned in a previous vid video that I quite like to use. Um, it's just a nice quick reference um, if you don't want to use your tape measure. Um, but obviously a tape measure is just as easy to use. Okay, so after that I then folded down the seam allowance for the outer fabric. So again, so this was only one centimetre. I would say actually it's probably a bit easier and gives you a bit more margin for error if you increase the seam allowance at the top a bit, just because it might be a bit easier to um, stitch it all together at the end. 
just something to bear in mind. So yeah, so I pressed that all down, but because I had the fusible fleece on it, it wasn't really holding itself down that well, especially because it's only a one centimetre seam allowance. So I've just added quilting clips just to keep it in place while I get on with the next step. Right, so the next step is to stitch around the base pieces. So um, this is just because um, you're then going to cut into the base layer in a moment. So here I am just switching back to the other colour. I'm um, getting my head in the way of the camera. So yeah, again, just um, working from the raw edge, just stitching on the seam allowance line. Okay, so then I went and cut at regular intervals up to that stitching line, just because then it makes it easier for you to attach the base piece to your main pieces for the carrier. So here I am, I'm just attaching the li main lining piece to the base lining piece. So with those notches cut into it, it just makes it so much easier to, to mold it into the shape. Um, as it is a circle, it does make it a bit trickier. And then I repeated this with the outer pieces as well. Again, the quilting clips are nice and easy to use. Um, but obviously, if you're feeling a bit unsure about stitching um, round in the circle, what you could do as well is um, do a bit of tacking. So next I cut my elastic, so here I'm just measuring it with the top of the water bottle that I'm using. So I've just taken the measurement there and then I've just allowed a bit of room to overlap the two ends of the elastic to stitch them together. So here I am just folding them over each other and I'm just going to stitch those together with a straight stitch but I'll probably reinforce it a couple of times so that it's secure. Once I did that I then tucked it up into the lining piece and um, where the casing is and just clipped it into place there. I also put the lining into the main bit of fabric so that um, they were wrong sides together and um, just in preparation for later on when it's all stitched together. So again I've just used quilting clips here to keep the elastic right at the top just because I didn't want to stitch it in when I secured the two bits together. However it probably is better if you either tack it in place or you use pins because I did find that it slipped quite a bit. Okay so now we're on to the straps and the strap bases. So you need to ensure that you've put interfacing on all of your pieces to start with. So to begin with you need to fold up one long edge of your strap pieces. So you're just here I'm just folding the seam allowance in on so that it's meeting the back of the bit of fabric so the wrong side and then I'm just repeating it with the other strap piece and then I repeated this with the strap bases as well so just along one of the long edges put up a one centimeter seam allowance and pressed it in place Okay, so next I pinned together the outer strap piece with the lining strap piece and pinned it along the long edge that I hadn't folded the hem down on. I also did this with the strap bases as well, so I put one lining piece with one of the outer pieces. So next I stitched all the way down the side, all the way down the long side, but with the main strap piece I also sewed the short ends down as well using the one centimetre seam allowance. Mm -hmm. 
Once I had done that, I trimmed the corners on the strap piece just so that I could get a nice point on the edge. And then I turned it round. So here I am just um, turning it right side out and pegging it in place ready for when I do my top stitching. Because I'm using interfacing, it's, it's staying in place quite well, but obviously you could press it at this stage. I also did the same with the strap bases. So I just turned it um, so that the right sides were facing out. Obviously with the strap bases, I just left the short edges raw because I didn't need to worry about those and um, because they'd be on the inside of the water bottle carrier, the main section. Right, so next I assembled the adjustable strap. So I'm going to do my best to try and explain this because it's one of those things where I just kind of fumbled along and worked it out in the end looking at another bag, I think. But anyway, so what you do to start with is you will need your strap, two swivel clasps and the slider. You will need to slide one swivel clasp onto the strap with the clip sides on the right sides of the strap. You then need to add the slider after this, feeding the strap above the middle line on the, on the slider but under the outer sections of the slider so you're kind of going under the outer edge over the middle line and under the other outer edge then you need to fold the short end of the strap underneath itself so that the slider is now caught between the strap so the lining should be um, facing each other and the outer fabric should be on the outside then stitch across the width of the strap close to the short edge to secure the slider in place bring the remaining short edge underneath the other end so that the swivel clasp and slider are down one end and the lining side is showing on the remaining end fold this remaining end over on itself and guide through the slider as before by going under the first edge looping the strap over the middle section and dipping back under the outer edge pull through this end until the swivel clasp pull through this end until the attached swivel clasp and slider are down the other end slide the remaining swivel clasp onto the short end of the strap with the clasp end showing on the outer side fold over the end so that the lining sides of the strap are facing each other stitch in place close to the short edge of the strap right so if you've got all that then you should have an adjustable strap done. Finally, you need to assemble the main carrier. So obviously you could do this before doing the adjustable strap, but for some reason I decided to get the strap over and done with. I think I was just avoiding this section, to be honest. Um, because using elastic, it is quite tricky to do this section. So obviously if you don't need to use it, brilliant, avoid it. So you need to fold the two strap bases in two so that the outer fabric is on display and slot a D-ring on each so that they're in the fold of the strap base. Position, pin and tack them in place. I would actually recommend stitching them to the outer fabric before attaching the lining, um, which obviously I haven't done here, but I would recommend doing it because it would just make it a lot easier. So yeah, um, if you haven't already, slide the lining piece into the outer piece so that the wrong sides are facing each other. Pin, tack all the way around, ensuring all the raw edges uh, of the strap bases are enclosed. And then top stitch all the way around. I would recommend doing a couple of rows of stitching just because it will reinforce it and make it a lot stronger. Finally, attach the strap, pop your water bottle inside and you're done. Okay, so just a few thoughts after the tutorial that I initially recorded. So I've ha had this carrier for a few weeks now, so I've been able to test it out. And on the whole, I'm happy with it. I don't think there's too many issues. It is quite a tight fit, and that's just because I didn't really add any wiggle room for it. But I mean, it makes sure that it doesn't slip out, so I'm fairly happy with that. Um, but it does obviously mean it's a little bit trickier to slide on and off. One thing I probably would change, and the only reason I didn't do it um, on this one was because I didn't have the resources and I just wanted to get on with it, but instead of using elastic up here is to um, attach a drawstring cord instead, and then you can adjust it. It could also make it a bit more versatile, so you could use it for a different sized water bottle, although you probably would still need it to be roughly the same height. Another thing to note is that I probably could have made these um, these um, straps that the um, D-rings are on, they could have been a bit 
smaller so they didn't need to go up this tall. I think I decided to make them this big just because the actual water bottle lid is quite tall. So I think it's fine for this bottle but if you had one that had a much smaller lid you could obviously trim that down, it could definitely be half the length that I've got it here. So these are just things to bear in mind depending on the water bottle that you're using in particular. But otherwise I'm really happy with the shape, I like that it's you know designed to mould around the water bottle. The strap's really handy, it's really handy that it's adjustable so I can move it from being cross body to just over one shoulder. Another thing I did add at the end was I put some of that weatherproof spray on it which is suitable for fabrics and shoes. I just thought that this would help it last a bit longer because I, I walk to work so it just means that it's more likely to withstand the elements um, for a lot longer. That's it from me today, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.